Welcome to Eat Blog Talk, where food bloggers come to get their fill of the latest tips, tricks, and insight into the world of food blogging. If you feel that hunger for information, we'll provide you with the tools you need to add value to your blog, and we'll also ensure you're taking care of yourself because food blogging is a demanding job. Now, please welcome your host, Megan Porta. Food bloggers, are you constantly feeling like you never have enough time, like you can't possibly fit it all in, and you'll never get to those projects you've been wanting to do because of a lack of time? Let me help you find that time because guess what? There's always enough of it. We just need to create space for it and be intentional about protecting it. Join my Facebook group where I will help you find the time you are looking for by analyzing what you are currently spending your time doing and by becoming a fierce time protector. Head over to eblogtalk.com forward slash always enough for more information and use the discount code EBT listener to get 20% off. This is a limited time offer, so you don't want to miss out on this. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash always enough to find that time you're looking for. As food bloggers, we want the best, most robust tools that can help us improve our ranking with Google. SEMrush is the way to go. It is an all-in-one marketing toolkit for those of you wanting to analyze SEO, get ideas for gaining more organic traffic, discover market insights, and reveal competitors' metrics. I have been using SEMrush for my own blog and have seen steady growth in my organic traffic. The tools and features offered inside are powerful and they work. Get a 14-day free trial with SEMrush when you use my affiliate link. Visit eatblogtalk.com forward slash resources to grab your link. SEMrush, the powerful tool that will change your SEO game. Hello, food bloggers. Welcome to Eat Blog Talk, the podcast made for you, food bloggers seeking value for your businesses and your lives. Today, I will be chatting with Lynette Rice from cleverlysimple.com, and we will talk about entrepreneurial isolation and loneliness. Lynette is the home cook, mom, and creative mind behind Cleverly Simple. With her husband and two boys, she recently moved into an 1800s farmhouse that has been in her family for generations. Now she's making that house into a home and preserving a sense of family tradition in the process, reviving old family favorites from her great-grandmother's recipe box and working to maintain the farm for the next generation. That is so cool, Lynette. I love that. And I think that's kind of a fun fact in itself, but do you have anything else to share with us for a fun fact? Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So one really random fun fact is that I once went two years and ate ice cream every single day day. (laughs) Oh, wow. So here in central Ohio, you'll find little ice cream shops in every single little town. I live in a very rural area because of our farm and I'm 25 minutes from the grocery store, but I have three different little, what we call dairy depots within minutes of us. So it's no surprise as a child that I ate a lot of ice cream. I don't eat that much anymore, but once went two years every single day having ice cream. So that's a little random fun fact about myself. (laughs) That's got to be some sort of record. I mean, a lot of people love ice cream, but every day for two years, that's amazing. Every day. I I think that's a dream come true for me. I am such an ice cream lover. I have to be careful, though, because like that, I would get on a streak like you and just keep going. (laughs) When I was pregnant with our second son, I did that with those little Ben and Jerry's like pint size ice cream flavors. Oh, my gosh. I was a nut. I literally had them like stacked, lined up in our freezer as if we were a grocery store. And people would come over and just make fun of me. They're like, how many ice cream flavors do you have today? (laughs) I totally understand the addiction. It's one of those things, you know, I'm a very committed person. And like you said, I just got on a streak and I couldn't stop. (laughs) I am committed to ice cream. (laughs) Well, thank you for sharing that. That was super fun. So you and I both know, Lynette, that being an entrepreneur can be very isolating and very lonely at times. So my hope for this episode is to let food bloggers who are listening know that they are not alone and also to maybe give them some tangible steps to take to combat those lonely stretches. So 
I would love it if you would start by talking us through your own blogging journey and how the isolation crept in for you. Sure. I actually started Cleverly Simple, bought the domain in April 2010. So I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary and it actually started more of a couponing and money saving blog. And if you know um, anything about money saving blogs, like you're tied to your computer, you're looking for the next deal, you're constantly needing to post 15 to 20 times a day, totally different than food blogging. But it led to me being at home all the time, working all the time. And I had young children at home. And while I've always felt very grateful that we get to work from home and have our own schedule, that commitment level uh, led to a lot of isolation. Uh, fast forward about four years ago, I transitioned into more of a food blog. I'd already always shared recipes, but I have been a full food blog for over four years now. And although I don't post 15 to 20 times a day, that would be probably some kind of record in the recipe niche. I have found that I love to be at home. I love to work at home. I'm a homebody. And the problem with that is that you can do that with what we do. And you can come to a point where everything you do surrounds you being by yourself. And although I'm by my family and see my family and they're very supportive, there comes a point where it's too easy to feel connected when you're really not. I think so many of us are in Facebook groups and we're interacting with readers through email and, you know, we may message friends we've met at conferences, but that I think tries to fill a void that can't really be filled unless you have that real human to human contact. And so I have, honestly, I probably wouldn't have told you I was lonely or that I was isolated. I felt it was just part of the beauty of working from home. But about three years ago, I started working at a little coffee shop nearby and by nearby, I mean, 25 minutes away, but nearby for me. And I was really excited about it because it was, had fast internet, which we have very slow internet out in rural areas. My internet is beamed from a silo. I'm not kidding. And <laughs> And then it beams to our windmill. And so we're very grateful we have internet because not everybody does in our area. But I would go to this little coffee shop and work. And I did that for about five or six months. I found myself being really productive there. But I also found that I got to know the person serving the coffee. Like they knew my drink, which was very fun. You walk in and they know you. And, you know, met the pastor that would come and work there. There were some other entrepreneurs that would come, you know, just very surface level chit chat here and there would go once a week. And about five or six months in, it closed. I went and pulled on the door one morning and it was locked. And that was it. And I was devastated, like so sad about it. Like I remember calling my husband and being like, you know, the coffee shops closed. And I think he was probably like, whoa, okay. It was just a coffee shop. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of started to process it over the next couple of days and realized it wasn't the coffee as good as it was. It was that I had for the first time in my entire business gotten out of the house when I was working and not just random places would I go to work and meet random people, but had actually gotten to know people consistently. And I realized that's what I was sad about. And it was in that moment I realized I was going to have to start being intentional about meeting people. And talking to people face to face in what we do because I was lonely. And I probably would have never told you that. I think a lot of entrepreneurs wouldn't tell you or even realize that they were, but I was because I wasn't getting that interaction that somebody in a typical nine to five job has. You know, they probably take for granted that those conversations they have about their vacations or the project they're working on at work and they pass each other in the hallway. I mean, that's a bit of a community that they have there. And we don't have that when you work online. And you have to be very intentional to create it and to realize that you need it. And so that's kind of where I was a few years ago um, and kind of my breakthrough moment to realize I need to step out. I love that the coffee shop is kind of what enlightened you about what you were getting and what you were needing. And (laughs) the fact that you came one day and it was closed and, you know, it's like you said, it's not about the coffee, but you were missing those actual human relationships and interactions, which Like you said, Lynette, nothing replaces that. I mean, we can talk online all day to our friends and our fellow food bloggers, but there is nothing that comes close to an actual human connection. So going to a coffee shop is a really great idea. And I've actually stopped doing that because of the internet 
issue because here I live in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and all the coffee shops are loaded with people. So I feel like every time I go, I just get frustrated. Like this is so slow. The connection is so slow. And then I, I just end up going home. So for a while I was kind of doing that too. I was going just to get out of the house. I was going to a coffee shop. Now I'm to the point where like, I just want to be fast. (laughs) So I stay home and I go through these stretches where I really isolate myself. So what are some ideas for that you have for us outside of coffee shops? How can we get out into the world and still be productive with our work, but have those human interactions? Yes, I think it's tough. I think the first step, like you said, is being intentional. And for someone like myself or someone out there that might sound incredibly horrifying, you know, to try to like find friends. But honestly, one of the first things that I did was um, a friend reached out and said, hey, there's a new blogger that's moved up from the South to Central Ohio area. And I think you guys would really connect. She doesn't know anyone. And so I was like, sure, let's, you know, meet for coffee. And we did, and we hit it off. Um, her, yeah, her name's Lori. She's a coupon blogger, which is ironic since I'd left that space, um, from passion, her name, uh, Lori from passionate penny pitcher, but we started to meet one on one, um, at Starbucks in between our, where we lived. And it was so life giving. We would talk mostly in the beginning about our businesses, but it, in turn, we would talk about life and family. We're both moms with kids and as supportive as my family is like, they don't really understand if I'm going to talk about my mood swings based on the Google algorithm, you know what I mean? Or (laughs) why I should go for a project or not go for a project. And so when we started meeting once a month, you know, we would meet at seven o'clock at night, you know, my husband put the kids to bed for me, which was great of him. And we would close Starbucks down. Like we would be out in the parking lot, still talking till 11 o'clock at night. And I think we realized that we were both really hungry for that, you know, deeper relationship to be able to talk business, somebody that totally gets what we're doing. And that led to me being more successful in my business because you have someone you can bounce ideas off of. There's validation for projects you want to move forward with, or someone just to be like, Hey, you, you thought of this, but how about you tweak it and do this? And, and then also just the struggles we have as entrepreneurs, you know, as a mom balancing it all, you know, when you really could work it all day, every day, all day, there's more to do. Um, so that would be my one encouragement for anyone that really wants to step out there is to look for someone in your area. We're all part of probably a Facebook group that's got similar um, business levels wherever you're at with your food blog, whether that's, you know, in your advertising agency or maybe another food blogger, you know, maybe just put out there, does anybody live in, you know, your area and meet up for coffee and see if you hit it off. It doesn't mean that you're going to. I was really blessed that Lori and I did and we maintain that friendship today. But at the same time, it takes commitment on your part. Once we moved up to our farmhouse three years ago, I was driving 45 minutes for us to meet for coffee. So we're talking an hour and a half round trip to meet someone for coffee, but it's worth it. You know, it's one time a month. And I think if we're going to be intentional about kind of getting out of our homes and our comfort zones, you might have to make those sacrifices of time. But I can tell you that I've been more productive and more successful in my business because of that relationship. And so it's worth it. You know, if you could take an hour and a half of time and know that that project's going to have validation or you're going to have better ideas because of it, or, you know, a challenge you want to have with your recipes or any kind of thing you want to work on, it's worth it. It's worth that time. I love that you pointed that out, that you're actually more productive if you take the time for it, because I think so many of us get caught up in the idea that if we take time away, we're going to be less productive because we're going to be stepping away from our work. But actually, it's going to feed us in a really unique way and make us more productive when we get back into it. So making that time commitment, that commitment to just, you know, reaching out to humans and like having human interaction is so valuable and important. So I love that you did that, Lynette, and I love that you guys really struck up a friendship and that you had, you know, like work stuff that you could talk about. I have a lot of friends that I can meet for coffee, but their eyes would glaze over if I started talking about work. So I love that you guys had, you know, life and work and that kind of fed your spirits in so many different ways, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's something to be known and to know someone else, you know, and I think that's something that we can feel that we have online when we're chatting with someone, but it's too easy to kind of leave a conversation in a message, you know, if it gets uncomfortable or you're not sure where to go with it, it's like, Hey, I gotta go change the laundry or whatever, you know? Um, but when 
when you're face to face with someone, you know, you've got to sit there and, and work through even those difficult conversations or things that you're thinking in your mind, you're wanting to work through with your business and have this ear to hear it. And I just think that's invaluable when it comes to business. It's invaluable when it comes to life, but I really think it leads to a more successful business because it gives you that confidence, that foundation and that encouragement with what you're doing. Because over email or text, you can so easily just be like, oh, I don't want to deal with that question right now. I do that all the time. I'm like, I don't have the capacity to answer this or think through it. But when you're face to face with somebody, you actually have to. You're forced to do that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that brings me to my other tip is um, I also at the same time was really getting out of my comfort zone. I joined a mastermind. You know, I had been blogging for over six, seven years before I joined a mastermind. You always hear about joining one and super intimidating to me because, you know, you're in a group of people. Some of them I had known before, not on a deeper level, but had met at conferences. Some of them I didn't know at all. And here you are sharing like your successes and your failures. Um, but it has been another really life-giving thing to my business, mostly because I did not realize how quickly I would get to know people. Um, kind of brings it back to, you know, when you are face to face and have these conversations, you really get to know someone in their business well. Um, we met for the second time, the one I'm in this year in October. And one of the things that we did the second day in October, um, was we went around and we each kind of shared what we really affirmed in that person or just what encouraged us about them or what we think they're doing really well in, which is super awkward when you're in the hot seat, you know, <laughs> it's really fun to be sharing that about someone else. And then it becomes your turn and you're like, this is super awkward but I was floored how well they knew me, like how well they knew I was processing decisions or just even how I, you know, think about new things that I want to work with. I was just like, Whoa, they, it was almost like, Whoa, they really know me, but man, that felt so good. You know, it felt like, okay, I'm, I'm on the right track or, Hey, I need to switch this up. So I'd really encourage anyone to join a mastermind. It's not as much a commitment as meeting every month with a friend for coffee, but it kind of gets you really out of your comfort zone to meet with people. Our mastermind, we have people not all in the food blogging niche. So you kind of get to hear what people are doing in the online space that's different and that maybe you could apply to your own business um, or take away from what they're doing and give them advice as well because our niche is so unique with recipes. So definitely something that is great to do. And again, something you can start on your own by just getting some people together in the area or maybe friends that you've met at a conference that you felt like you really hit it off with, you know, just getting five or six people together and flying to a central location for a couple of days, two times a year. Like it's a really great way to, you know, get out of that loneliness. I always come back inspired and energized and ready to dig in. And I think that's so important. So it sounds like you do yours in person. I know a lot of people do them online too, and then maybe like once a year in person. So what do you think about starting an online mastermind group? Do you think that's as valuable? I definitely think it's, if that's the way you want to take it, totally worth it. I have a friend that we meet once a month um, online through video chat, kind of like how I meet with coffee with Lori. We meet online because she lives in Oregon and I live in Ohio and it's been great. I think when you can see the mannerism, mannerisms and, you know, have that face to face connection, I think it's just as valuable. Definitely love when you can meet face to face because you have that whole day and you know, you have that time when you go out to dinner together and you have all those conversations that offshoot the ones within the organized content time. So if you can get to a face to face, totally great. But if all you have is online chat, I think that's wonderful too. Better than a phone call for sure. Yes. Or just texting. Yes. It's so hard to read what someone's oh, yeah. thinking through words on text. <laughs> I totally agree with that. And I think that people who take the time for masterminds are very dedicated and very committed people to their jobs and to being an entrepreneur. So I think that that says a lot. And I love that you said that you went in and they kind of all knew you and you're like, what? How did you know that about me? But that is so true. Somebody who takes the time for groups like that, they really do like, you know, they have that extra little bit of um, like intuition, I think I'm trying to say like, and commitment. So I love that. I love masterminds. And I think there's such power in them for so many different reasons. And the loneliness factor for sure is one of them. And also conferences. What are your thoughts about 
conferences for combating loneliness? I think conferences are a really great way to step out and practice getting out of your comfort zone. I think one of the dangers of conferences, if you're feeling lonely, is you can totally isolate yourself within a conference as well. And so I think conferences are great when you go in with the mindset of networking and meeting new people, you know, sitting at that table with no one that you know, because I guarantee there are other food bloggers out there at that same conference feeling the exact same way that you do, nervous about meeting new people and feeling uncomfortable. Um, So I think they're a really wonderful way to start connecting because, I mean, I met my friend Lori for coffee through a friend that I'd met at a conference who knew her. You know, my mastermind was all based on some people who are running it who I'd met at conferences years ago. You know, it's definitely really an important first step, I think, in getting to know people. And honestly, some of my favorite parts of conferences aren't the speakers up front. They're sitting at the table afterwards or in between and just chatting with people about what's going great with their business and what they're using and what they're, you know, what they're learning about food blogging, what's the newest trends. And that in itself can help you connect and start that friendship that can lessen that isolation you feel when you go back home and you're working again. When I think back to the past handful of conferences I've been to, that is exactly what I think about. I think of those interactions that were between sessions or maybe after a session where we were all laughing and we just had a good, I don't know, you know, good vibe. And so that's funny that that's what you think about instead of like, oh, that speaker was amazing. (laughs) But yeah, there's such value there. But you're right. Like it can be, it can make you feel more isolated too if you're not careful with your mindset going in because you can totally so easily isolate yourself and be like, nobody wants to talk to me. I'm just going to sit here. So you do have to go in with an attitude of like, I am here to meet people and not, not just absorb the information that I'm getting, but going in with that like networking kind of mindset. And I get that that is so challenging for people. Like I'm more of an introvert than I am an extrovert. Like my husband's the one who at a, in a room will meet everyone, you know, and I'm like in the corner with a couple of people that I know really well, you know, totally intimidated. So it takes a lot for me to step out of that. It is uncomfortable and it feels awkward, but I have learned now on the other side, the fruit of being able to step out of my comfort zone and to get out there. I've seen the impact that's had on my life and I've seen the impact it's had on my business. And so now knowing that I'm more willing to step out and be uncomfortable, but it takes some time doing that and starting to see that fruit, but it's totally worth it to do it, to just get out there and start meeting some people because in our jobs, when we're lonely, it, I do think it will take a toll on your business. I saw it on mine. Like I just, it just makes you feel, have the ick feeling. You know what I mean? You just feel, am I the only one doing this? Am I going anywhere? You know, it's just, you can kind of get into that cycle of feeling what's the purpose here. And when you have those connections and those relationships and you're kind of like all kind of moving together, it really helps you see the big picture and form a vision for your business of where you want to go. Cause you can see where other people have gone and what they've done and success they've had. And it's totally inspiring. But you only have that when you really get to know people deeply and see the struggles and see the successes they've gone through. So I'm coming up on 10 years as well, being a food blogger, Lynette. So I'm with you on the whole, like being in it for a long time. And for a very long time, I did not connect with other people, other food bloggers. And I can tell you that within the last year, I've scaled my business more than any previous year, like by far. And do you know why? I mean, I think this is a huge part of it. It's not all of it, but... Because I started this podcast and I started talking to people and every single week I have a handful of interviews where I talk to people that I've never previously met and I make these connections and it has snowballed into such an amazing thing. It's so, it's like beautiful in a way. I know that's cheesy, but not only does it feed my loneliness and help me to pull myself out of that on a weekly basis. Because after I get done with these chats, it's really fulfilling. Like, oh, yes, I talked to a few people today. It's amazing. And we talked about valuable stuff. But also, I just think it really, like you said, it really does feed your business in a unique way that you really can't explain until you let it happen. So I think there is definitely magic in that. Absolutely. I think so often we hear of like 
SEO or better photography, like those things being something that grows and drives your business. And absolutely they're important, but you have to feel like you emotionally are healthy to be able to move forward and do those things. Because let's be honest, like working on SEO sometimes is super boring. It's tedious, you know, and if you have things to look forward to, or you've you have a friend who's done it and seen the success of it. You know, it's just all those things are so motivating and it just kind of all works together to provide that driving force in your business. Oh, I so agree with that. So do you have any other tangible steps you've talked about just being intentional about getting out and then maybe joining a mastermind? What else do you have? Well, last April, I actually joined a co-working space called Cohatch in Central Ohio. I'm sure there's ones all over the nation. And it was a financial commitment for me as a business because, you know, I pay a membership fee. I'm actually sitting there right now because hello, faster internet. It has been another level of just really wonderful way to connect people. It's 30 minutes from my home. Again, you know, this is, we're talking about an hour round trip drive for me and I'm limited on time. I work while my kids are in school, but I am so much more productive here. And here I'm working alongside my friend, Lori, who I met for coffee. She's a member too. So that's fun. We get to see each other more often, but I also, you know, we have somebody who runs a title agency. There's an HR person, there's a videographer, a webmaster, you know, all these different entrepreneurs that are online and we're all working here because otherwise we'd be at home, you know, and we all kind of want that connection. And so we get to work really hard. I'm very productive here when I'm here and less distraction, but then you get up and you get that cup of coffee or the glass of water and you can connect and chat about what they're working on. And it again has been a really valuable thing for me to kind of just get out and be a part of what would be a typical com- work community, probably non-traditional because we're all kind of working on our own thing, but it's been really, really great. And I just come two times a week. I mean, I mostly still work from home, but having that that time, I really look forward to it. Like I look forward to like getting out of my pajamas, you know, like looking presentable and having ability to connect with people. And it's not a lot of the time during the day, but it's enough that it, you know, again, just feed your soul and knowing that you're like, other people are like me, other people are working really hard online and I get to connect with them along the way. And other people need that human interaction. So that's why everybody's doing that. I, it is a very popular thing. I hear people all the time talking about going to co-working spaces and I've never tried one, but I really want to. And you mentioned it being a financial commitment. I have no idea. Like I didn't even know that you had to pay to do that. I didn't know anything about it. So tell me about that. So the way our co-working space works, and I'm sure they're all a little different, but there's different levels. So I use as co-working, which means I can work anywhere in the building outside of the set offices and I pay a membership fee and I have 24 seven access. Like our co-working space has a theater room, has a game room, which is wonderful in the summer. I can bring my kids, they can play on the games and get a little work done. But then you also have levels where you can pay extra and have like a dedicated office within the space. And then there's lower levels where you only come 20 hours a month or, you know, so I pay over a hundred dollars. That's about $150. If you don't mind me saying for people who want an idea to come for a monthly basis, but it comes with lots of perks along with that. Like they have a bounce house I can use for free and a beach house that you can get really cheaply. Well, not cheap, but you know, I mean, cheaper than typical for vacation. Like they really want to hone in on the family and, you know, creating a healthy lifestyle with your business online, but you'll pay upwards of closer here to $500 a month. If you wanted a dedicated office, I don't need that because I live farther away. I just want to be able to come and go as I please. But for some, I mean, all the offices are full, you know, they're able to have that dedicated space, but you're still around people, which, you know, a lot of offices probably in a traditional sense, you shut the door and you're just as much as at home, you know, isolated in your little office. So here they're all glass and, you know, everybody kind of interacts. So it's a really wonderful thing. I've been super productive. Obviously I can't cook here as a recipe blogger. So like I have cook days at home, but I can come here and edit videos and work on SEO. And honestly, I do the most tedious things here to keep me focused, (laughs) you know, without distraction. And I found myself to be more successful in that. So you mentioned that you're more productive there. Do you find that people respect your time while you're working there or do you get ever get like bothered and you're like, oh, I'm trying to work (laughs) because I felt like in my old office environment, I was always like, why are you in my office? I need to work. (laughs) I think because we're all entrepreneurs here, we're all like our own business and our success of our business depends on ourselves. And yeah, we're all nose of the grindstone. Like there's pretty much no interaction unless like you're stopping to get coffee or water. Like people have headphones on. It is funny. There's one office that's a HR company and 
they're probably more of a traditional company that has an office here. And I see them talking all the time and I'm like, do we need to get something done? (laughs) But everybody else, like the typical, like online entrepreneur is totally in their computer, like not talking to anyone, just working. But it's nice because you have that balance, you know, you get your work done, but then you get up and you say hello and you talk with people, what they're working on. And so you get that, you know, getting out, it just really helps that loneliness factor when you're just surrounded by like-minded people. I prefer it over a coffee shop because we're all kind of driven and, you know, it's not just random people coming in and out. You kind of get to know the people that are here, which is very nice. And you mentioned getting up and actually like looking presentable and like curling your hair and putting clothes on that aren't like yoga pants. And I love that on the days when I have to actually get out and do something or if I'm shooting video or, you know, whatever. And I actually like do my hair and put makeup on. I just feel so much better about myself. And when I go pick my boys up from school, I'm not a slob (laughs) walking, walking into the school. So there is something to that. Just making yourself look presentable once in a while. And that really carries over into how you feel about yourself, too. What I love about what we get to do is that we can be at home in our pajamas, but yeah. over time there are that there is value to getting out, you know, and mm-hmm. looking presentable. So we really have the best of both worlds. You know, we can have those moments where we don't feel like going out, but it's really important I think for myself and and hopefully others will see this to kind of get out and be around other people in a typical setting. Yeah, it just helps that loneliness factor. Just just getting out. It's it's been huge for me in my business. And like I've said, I've just been so much more productive since being able to do that. Well, anything that makes you happier too is going to turn you into a more productive person. I totally believe that. So what else do you have for us after co-working space? Do you have anything else? Well, kind of on a more personal level, I think it goes beyond just business is that my husband and I try to be just more involved in our community because, you know, we had really young kids for a long time and it was, it was hard, especially since we live in a rural area. It's not like there's a lot of to do (laughs) outside of, you know, taking a walk um, and enjoying landscape, which we do love where we live. But I joined a local YMCA this year and have been swimming and that's been good for, you know, just again, running into the same people, typically chit chatting and then, you know, the health factor of being able to exercise around others. So that's been really great. I volunteer now at my kids PTO at school, which has helped me get to know other parents, you know, and are, we've joined a small group at our church as a family just to kind of meet other people and go on a deeper level. And I think all those have been really important for a healthy balance, because like I said earlier, like with recipes, you can always be editing something, creating something, planning something, SEO. I mean, there is literally, you could work all day and still have more to do. And I think being involved in my community helps with that balance to kind of not make my life all about work and allow the connections to not just be within work, but be outside work as well. And so I think they're just as intentional and it just has allowed our family to kind of have more of a healthy balance when it comes to my business. I think it's so important to have those relationships and those things to do that have absolutely nothing to do with food blogging or being an entrepreneur at all. And I love that you do that. You go out and get involved in the YMCA and volunteer at school. And we also host a life group for our church. And that has been huge for us because I don't have to talk about work at all. I don't have to think about it. And, you know, we work from home. So we're at least speaking for myself. I think about work all the time when I'm at home. So when we do things like that, Afterward, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't think about SEO one time. Yes. <laughs> there is life outside of our recipe blog. <laughs> there is. And it's healthy. Yes. It's so healthy to do that. And we have to almost shake ourselves sometimes and just be like, you have got to get out of this zone because like you said, we can work all literally all day and never take a break if we wanted to. There's that much work constantly. And I think there's the misconception that the more time you put into work, the more productive you'll be. And I think what I've learned is that the healthier I am personally, um, the more productive I am. So I'm able to balance things better. I'm feel more encouraged. There's more of a foundation to my business. And so that's led to growth in my recipe blog the last couple of years. It's kind of the opposite where you think the more time you put in, the more it's going to come out of it. But if you have that balance, you're just so much more productive in the time that you do have. And it's more purposeful, I feel. And so it's just led to more success. And I think at the same time, allowed more longevity because I've been doing this for 10 years like you have. And 
it's a long time, but I can do it for the next 10 years because I feel really great with where I'm at right now. You know, I feel fulfilled with those business friendships and those personal friendships to keep moving forward. It's counterintuitive, isn't it? To think like, well, if I stop working, then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be productive, but actually it's the other way around. So how do you, what are your recommendations for people who maybe are just like buried in loneliness and work and feeling like they can't take a break? What is a good first step to take? I think one of the best first steps is just trying to connect with one person. Don't feel like you need to join a mastermind. Don't feel like you need to attend a huge conference. But I know all of us, if we're in the recipe blog step are in one, at least one Facebook group, you know, reach out and see if anyone lives locally and see if you can connect, uh, whether it's video chat at first and then move forward to meeting for coffee. I think that's kind of where I started after the whole coffee shop devastation, (laughs) you know, is just meeting with my friend Lori. And honestly, I wouldn't have told you like that was going to be such an important part of my business, but man, it's been awesome. I'm so grateful for her friendship. And I think the best first step is to just try to connect with just one person, um, one, and doesn't have to be a food blogger. It'd be great if they were just a blogger, you know, and are in the similar business she is for me. And so just to be able to share those similar life experiences is just really wonderful. And then that just, you know, jumped me off from there to be able to be like, okay, this is valuable. I need more of this, you know, and to be able to connect with more people. But I think just starting with one person, less intimidating and super valuable in itself. One little step I think can lead to so much more. So I love that you said that you didn't suggest like starting out with a huge thing. Just, you just really have to reach out to one person and start small. And I promise that it will build and gain momentum from there. So do you have anything else tangible that people can do to step outside of their loneliness? Um, I think one of the things that helped me is accountability, you know, telling my husband like, Hey, I'm going to go do this. Maybe you have a personal friend that's not in the business that can give you some accountability, a spouse, a friend, anyone, because I think it's too easy to say we're going to do something and not do it because there's no consequences to it other than just staying in that loneliness funk, you know? So I think if you have someone, I I've just found like one of the things I want to do this year is to start a dinner club with ladies in my community. Cause living in a rural area, it can be very isolating because you don't really run into each other naturally very often. Often. And so, you know, accountability can be even saying, I'm saying that on this podcast now, so it's going to happen, <laughs> you know, just beginning of the year, 2020 goals, you know, what is that one thing you want to do to tackle this and then tell someone, you know, have that accountability so that it kind of spurs you to do it, you know, so that you're not just saying you're going to do it and then not doing it and not getting to see the benefits of that deeper relationship with someone that you never even started because you didn't want to. There's a lot of power in speaking things that you intend to do because you're almost like, oh no, I just put it out there. I kind of have to follow through. But it's really powerful to do that, even if it is, like you mentioned, just to a husband or a spouse or a friend who's not in our world, just putting it out there and letting things happen, letting things unfold. And it seems like such a simple thing, right? But there there is so much power in it. I think one of the things most people probably take for granted if they're not an online entrepreneur is the friendships and community they have surrounding them. And I think that's going to be one of the challenges we always face in this space is we're going to have to be really intentional because it's just too easy to be successful in our business without ever stepping out of our comfort zone in a lot of ways when it comes to relationships with people, that face-to-face deeper interaction. And it can be awkward when you get to know someone, you know, it can be uncomfortable, even when you're sitting across from each other having coffee that first time, but it's so, so worth it if you can take that first step. And stepping out can help to scale our businesses so hugely. And that's really hard to see when we're in the pit of isolation and just feeling like we need to grind away constantly every day. What else do you have for us? Is there anything else that you recommend? You've given us such great advice and I'm ready to tackle a few of these, but do you have anything else? I think that's about it. I mean, I feel like I've covered a lot. I think the first, the only thing I would just say is just step out, just do it. You know, don't be afraid. It's totally worth it. You know, four years ago, I probably would have told you I'll be good, but I have seen such growth and productivity in my business because I took those first steps. So I just encourage anyone, just do it. And just a happier person, right? I mean, you're a happier person, which makes you a better business owner. And that kind of is like this endless cycle. The happier you are, 
on a personal level, you become a better business owner and vice versa. So it's kind of like it spirals out of control in a good way when you just make that effort. Absolutely. And I think of all the things we've done as recipe bloggers, you know, when I started, I didn't know how to, you know, hold the camera correctly. You know, I had no idea what SEO stood for. You know, as bloggers, we have all learned new things. We've all had to start with nothing and build it up from the ground. So this is just think of it as one more thing that you can add to your toolbox to start and to get going to help you grow your business. It's another piece of that gigantic puzzle known as food blogging. And we tend to think of like SEO and Pinterest and all of those uh, more tangible things as the most important pieces of the puzzle. But actually, this is a really big piece of it too. And then I was going to ask you, Lynette, have you heard of meetup.com? And have you ever looked into doing something like that? I have heard of it. I have never used it. So, But I think that would be a great way to try to connect with others. And I also know our co-working space, whether or not you're a member, you can still be a part of the community. And they host a lot of things to get people to connect and to reach out. Some things are on social media. Some things aren't as relevant to a food blog. But that might be another great way to um, connect, meet up, or see if your co-working space has things that they offer or anything like that. Somebody recommended meet up to me a while ago, maybe because I was seeming extra lonely or something, but I looked at the website. I didn't actually sign up for any of the events or the groups, but it looks really intriguing. There's groups for absolutely everything. And I live in a big, you know, I live in a big city. So obviously there's going to be a lot of options for me. I don't know if there would be options in smaller cities, maybe. But I mean, everything from just general entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurial ventures and like more specific, like if you want to go and cook, I mean, it just went on and on. So I can see where people could get a lot of value out of that. And a lot of people do this sort of thing because obviously we're all feeling the same. We all need people in our lives. We all need that human connection. So it's worth checking out. I think we've covered so much that we have given so many great ideas. You have given so many great ideas about just ways that people can step out of this entrepreneurial, lonely, isolated world and be really a more healthy person and business owner. So thank you for sharing all of that. Is there anything else that we've missed that you'd like to cover before we say goodbye? Well, I did have a quote I wanted to share. It's from one of my favorite authors. Quote, I am beginning to learn that it is the sweet, simple things of life, which are the real ones after all. And it's from Laura Ingalls Wilder, which is obviously one of my favorites since I live in a rural area. But one of the things I love about it is that I think in our business, things are so complex at times. And really, if we look at the simple things in life, which are those friendships and that community that you have around you, I think we can look at the complex and think that's what's going to grow our recipe blog. But when we really take a moment to enjoy those sweet, simple things that are real, I think you'll realize how healthy it makes you, how life-giving it is to you. And that in itself will help you move forward in your business to honestly growth more than you could have ever imagined. Wow. That was so well said. Thank you for saying that. That was amazing. So yeah, thank you for being here, Lynette. This was very valuable, and I think that food bloggers will find immense value in this as well. Lynette has a list of helpful resources relating to today's topic and everything we've talked about. We'll put some of those links up, like meetup.com and some other things that we've discussed, and those can be found on her show notes page at eatblogtalk.com forward slash Lynette Rice. Lynette, tell my listeners the best place to find you online. So you can find me at cleverlysimple.com, and then I'm at you know, if you want to follow the recipes on Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook, it's all at Cleverly Simple. Um, and I'm available on all those. And I love using Instagram to kind of show what we're doing at our farmhouse. So if you'd like to see what we're doing there, you can follow me there at Cleverly Simple. I peeked at your Instagram account last night, by the way. And oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Your house and just, oh, beautiful feed. And I think your home is beautiful too. Oh, thank you so much. It's been one of the foundations to me, realizing those simple things in life. It's one of my goals with uh, food blogging is just to share those simple recipes. And, you know, I think anyone can experience it, whether or not you live in a farmhouse from the 1800s or not. We all have the ability to have those communities and, you know, those simple moments with friends that are going to be helpful in our business moving forward. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for being here, Lynette. And thank you for listening today, food bloggers. I will see you next time. 
We're glad you could join us on this episode of Eat Blog Talk. For more resources based on today's discussion, as well as show notes and an opportunity to be on a future episode of the show, be sure to head to eatblogtalk.com. If you feel that hunger for information, we'll be here to feed you on Eat Blog Talk.